Hey, good evening. Uh, we've done a few more things since our last video, so let's take a look around the garden and see what's new. This past weekend, I signed the kids some grunt work. Their task was to spread two bales of straw we had purchased at a greenhouse for $4 a piece along these paths, and uh, as you can see, they did a pretty good job. The main reason why we did this is because the straw will uh, hopefully reduce the amount of mud and dirt and grime we track into the house. It should also suppress any weeds that attempt to rear their ugly heads. This bedding is about three inches thick. Should last most of the season. And if we notice, if we can, or if we see the ground, uh, we know we'll need to replenish it. But like I said, it should last a while. Uh, the other thing we did this weekend, and I don't know if we don't have a lot of daylight here, but we'll zoom in down here. So we planted our onions that we grew from seed. These are sweet Walla Walla onions. And they're planted about four inches apart. I've got ten rows of them, and they're all doing really well. They should grow nice and big, maybe three, four inches in diameter. The closer you space them, the smaller the onions would be. So we're going for big onions this year. The onions that uh, they'll be in this bed the whole season. They take they'll take all season to to mature. And they like wet conditions. It's been pretty wet. We've had a lot of rain and it's been overcast. So these are ideal conditions for them. As long as it doesn't get uh, much below freezing, these should, seedlings should be fine. They seem to be doing well. The thing though I really want to highlight is our tomato cages. I made these last summer out of 15 foot long segments of cattle paneling that I purchased at Big R for $15 a piece. I was able to get three cages out of each panel section and when I purchased the panels I had the uh, the employee there use bolt cutters to cut them up into thirds for me and then when I got them home uh, you, <laughs> using a little bit of brute strength uh, sheer force bent these around and then used a fencing tool to bend these hooks at the ends and so when I rolled it uh, I was able to hook them and to so they retain their shape there's about a foot or two a foot foot and a half diameter maybe close to two feet uh, in the cage the cages are five foot tall and these openings here are six inches by eight inches which is really handy as far as reaching in trying to grab tomatoes these are really they're pretty substantial each one weighs about 8 to 10 pounds and to make them a little more rigid and to support them even more I hammered in a three foot long segments of rebar which I'll be using zip ties to secure the cages to. I currently have nine cages I'm wanting to build 15 more so I have a total of 24 cages as they, they worked out really well a new thing that I'm doing this year is I want to use these things as much as possible. I get my money's worth. So I'm using them in the early spring for my peas. The idea is I'm going to plant peas around these towers or these supports. I figure I can get at 3 inch spacing 16 plants around each one of these towers. And then they should grow right up the supports and produce lots of yummy peas. And then by... Um, mid-June or so when the peas start dying off I'm gonna move these cages over to the other side of our garden because last year we had our tomatoes over here so now we're gonna move them over here as part of the crop rotation and along with them I strip these cages of the vines that are hanging on them and mulch the vines into the garden beds just providing they're not diseased or anything like that it should provide a nitrogen boost for the tomatoes, which are heavy feeders, it should should work out pretty well. A 
the tomatoes, all the tomatoes I'm growing this year will be indeterminate varieties, which means they they don't set their fruit all at once. They produce throughout the season. And they'll grow as tall, as big as the supports that you have for them, um, if given enough time. Last year I had them, they actually grew a foot or two over these supports and then collapsed down and started growing down the other side. And so I had to prune them back. And that's one thing I'm going to be a little more proactive at doing is trying to um, prune the foliage, snap off the suckers so that um, more of the plant's energy is focused on producing fruit and setting fruit rather than um, just producing leaves. So I'm excited. It should be uh, pretty fun. I think the kids are going to have a lot of fun. Hopefully, helping me. Maybe we'll learn something in doing all this. Uh, that's probably all for now. Well, maybe in the next video, we'll highlight some some of the things that we have downstairs growing in the basement. Right now, uh, this is the ideal time to start your uh, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower plants. Um, so we've. We've got those, or those seeds are started downstairs in the basement along with our peas. And then in a couple weeks here we'll be planting everything out in the garden. So that's it for now.